morning we're learning a Maimah, a Pasha's told us, and it's also, uh, it was just Shabbos Mevochim, or Shchodesh Kislev is coming up on Tuesday. This Maimah was said in Tavshin Yudalad 1954, and it's called Lehovin Inyan Rosh Chodesh. So to understand the inner meaning of Rosh Chodesh, what a Hasidic perspective on Rosh Chodesh. So Lehov Inyan Rosh Chodesh, and Rosh Chodesh, and Rosh Chodesh, and Rosh Chodesh, and Rosh Shchodesh is the birth of the moon, the renewal of the moon. It comes to the Moilod, it starts off with an, a dot. The birth of the moon starts off as a dot. During the, the first half of the month, it becomes bigger and bigger. Once it hits the 16th of the month, it starts to be, it starts to reduce, diminished, uh, diminished, as from the 16th and on. Once you reach the, the, you get to the end of the month, by Erev there is a complete concealment, its light is, is darkened, is deemed, completely, there is the birth of the moon. Kenekud. It starts off with a dot. So we need to, to understand the deeper meaning of this uh, cycle. Why do we call it the head of the month? Maybe it should be called Why Rosh Chodesh? Like we say in Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. Why don't we say the holiday of the big, beginning of the year? Instead of Rosh Hashanah. So it's explained in Chesidus and other sources that Rosh Hashanah is like the head of a person, that the head contains all the, the vitality of all the limbs. All the limbs are receiving their vitality in the heads, from the head, so therefore the head has within it the highest of all the limbs. Okay? A person can, God forbid, live with, uh, without a uh, leg or without hand, but he cannot live without a head. Similarly, this is what happens in, in the Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah has within it entire uh, vitality of the whole year, the life of the whole year. And from the Rosh Hashanah, the Chayus is... Uh, emanated is being drawn down to the entire year. And the chaos is, is being transmitted in such a way that it's divided into 12 or 13, depends on the year. So the chaos is given to another head, from head to head, from the head of Rosh Hashanah. It gives, it now it's divided to 12 heads. What is the 12 heads? The Rosh Chodesh. So each Rosh Chodesh receives Chayus from Rosh Hashanah. Okay. There's this order. It's not just uh, some chaos of uh, energy from Rosh Hashanah that's given every day. No, it goes from, from the Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Chodesh Tishrei gets Chayus, Rosh Chodesh Cheshvan gets Chayus. The head of the month receives Chayus. It's like a substation. Yes, yes. There's a... A way of, of, of distribution. There is an order with the distribution of, of energy, of life, that is, is given. It starts off from Rosh Hashanah. So the chaos is given to Rosh, to Rosh Hashanah. Now I can maybe, we can maybe get an idea of why it says that the leap year is a little bit more of a challenging year. It's, if, if we follow this uh, concept, this idea, it could be more challenging because there's less chayus. The chayus is now uh, uh, maybe it's, it, it's, 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 it's reduced Rosh, into. Rosh has enough of the thirteen. But it's it's being reduced <laughs> to thirteen. Maybe I don't know. I'm saying why is it since it's an added month? It's written in a few sources as more of a challenging year. So I'm trying to think maybe it's associated with the chayus. Yes, yeah, double order, yeah. Right. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. Rosh Chodesh is like the head. So Rosh Chodesh has within it 
the life, the energy to, to the, for, of 30 days. So again, there's a specific chayus, individualized chayus energy to every single day. So the Roish has within it chayus for Aleph, Kislev, Beis, Kislev, Each day receives a unique energy. And for this reason, since the Roish Chodesh encapsulate the entire the energy for the entire month, it's called Roish Chodesh Veloit Chilas Chodesh. That's the answer. Why are we calling it Roish Chodesh and not Chilas Chodesh? Because it's like a head. It's like the head that contains with it the Chayos for the entire month. So, you know the saying, the way you establish yourself in Shabbos Bereshis, it goes through the whole year. They say, this is how you're going to behave the entire year. Seemingly, in Roish Chodesh is an opportune time to start off the month properly, right? Because the chayus is, is, is already there for the whole month. Why do we call uh, Why don't we call Shabbos Rosh Hashavua, the head of the week? Shabbos says that the six days before the Shabbos, the days that are leading to Shabbos, Mizborim, they're going through every day, we know that we're here for Aveda Sabirurim. Our job is to separate good from bad, and we're making these choices all the time, between uh, getting up, staying in bed, or getting up, <laughs> eating, <laughs> eating kosher, not eating kosher, people make these choices all the time. But Shabbos, is the elevation of all the birurim. Said, okay, it's like uh, closing the uh, the cash register at the end of the day. So before, that's why the Baal Shem Tov, we spoke about it, the Baal Shem Tov used to write the mincha of, uh, of, Shab, of Erev Shabbos. He would make a very uh, uh, big deal about this mincha because it says it's like the closing argument for the whole week. It's like all the davenings the whole week are uh, now being uh, culminated into this last davening of the week. So for our uh, discussion, he says that the, all the birurim, all the elevations that are being done through the week is are being elevated on Shabbos. Six days before the Shabbos are being uh, being sorted out, being uh, separated, being uh, separated good from bad. Nichlolim ve'oylim v'yom ha'Shabbos. They are elevated on Shabbos. Ale yom ha'Shabbos u'gam amoker al sheish me'achol. But Shabbos not only uh, serves as a day for elevating all the birurim, it also serves as source for the six days, uh, for the six uh, day, days of the week. Shel achre ha'Shabbos ki mi name is bochin kulim. It's a famous statement of Zayar that the bracha comes to, from Shabbos to all the days of the week. You see where he's going with this. He wants to tell us that Shabbos is also a Rosh. If Shabbos is a Rosh, we should call Shabbos Rosh. Rosh HaShavuah. Rosh HaShavuah, yeah. It's written in the Midrash on, on the book of Shmois. Sheyem HaShabbos nimshal lezeev shetor v'nform lacho. It says Shabbos is like a wolf. Wolf has the ability to, I guess, kill a prey that is in front and back. He is uh, very vicious, I guess, in front and back. He <laughs> handles them both. So, Vainu says Shabbos has, we, we say every, Ayyem Riyom Rishon Vashabbos, and Rishon Vashabbos, halachically, you can say Avdala all the way to Tuesday, by because it's still associated with yes. uh, Shabbos Chai Sol. Um, and and uh, from Wednesday, we say, Lechun Eranon Al Hashem, it shows that in the Ayyem Yom, uh, we said the end, Lechun Eranon, to show that it's already associated with next Shabbos. So every Shabbos has, uh, is within it, two, Shab- so, two, so two weeks. Right. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of, of, of the next, of Pasha's told this. So Shabbos includes within it the six days that are lefanov, uh, also the six days that are coming. 
And since this, this, the day of Shabbos has, includes within it the six days of the week, should have been called Rosh HaShavua. The same way that we call it Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh, since it's the source of life, the source of vitality for the, the entire month. Similarly with Shabbos, is the source of Chavis for the whole week. Okay, so the question is understood. Why don't we call, since Shabbos is the source of Chavis for the whole week, my name is Bach in Kuluyemin, that all the days are being blessed from Shabbos. Obviously the Chavis is already in Shabbos. Why don't we call Shabbos Rosh Ha Shavua? Base. Line 11. The Yuvans are back in Tchila Binyan Ha Oyer Shugila Ashpom in Elam Atzmus Kshayetz Mubel. It says, we need to understand Inyan Ha Oyer. What does that mean, Inyan Ha Oyer? The concept of light, godly light. Godly light that comes from Hashem. Shehu Gilui Ha Ashpom in Elam What does it mean? Revelation of light, godly light. Godly light means revelation of flow from the essence, from the concealment, from a place of concealment, which is the Atmos. The essence of Eleikus is concealed. But there is emanation from there, revelation. There is oil. Sha'etz and Ubelem, the essence is revealed. The same way you don't see the bones, but you see the skin. Right? You can't see the bones of a person unless you're doing uh, MRI, but uh, otherwise we, the bone is... That's an etzim. Etzim is a bone, right? You don't see the, the atzmus. But we, we have some godly revelation. The revelation from the essence is called light. It's not that the essence itself that is concealed is revealed. The etzim, the essence, is, remains hidden, remains concealed. But nevertheless, there is a ray that comes from the etzim, from the essence. And from that ray, this, the zulas, the outsider, has an ashpo, has a flow, has a revelation. And this type of revelation is called light. That's why the essence is not bothered by the revelation of light. Why? Because it's not really him. It's just away from him. It's not impacting him in any way. That's what he says right now. It doesn't create any kind of change in the essence. The essence is not bothered at all. Whether it shines or it doesn't shine. Because it's not the essence. It's not even revealing the essence. It's just a ray that emits, that comes out of it, and therefore is not affected or bothered by it in any way. And he gives an example. He says, for example, we all have nefesh, we all have a soul that gives life to the body. And the nefesh that is in our body is only a ray from the essence of the nefesh. And you have the nefesh, and you have the essence of the nefesh. But what we have is just a ray from the essence. Ki nefesh Again, the essence is concealed. And it's such concealment that it's not, does not have the position or the status of giving life. The essence is not, it, that's not its functionality to give life. Is over here an uh, uh, explanation on this concept. Um, I try to just summarize the, what the, the point that they're saying. It says when you have energy that is drawn down from the source of Chayus, from the Etzim, there's two ways of how it's being done. You write that there is a source, there is an, a mocker that's called Chay Be'etzim, Meaning that the essence of, of it has chayus, has life in it. But the, the chayus that comes from it and is given to others, and it's given. So the chayus comes from it to give life to others. But it's metzius nifredus, but it's an, an outside of him. 
of the Shumer, Mashpiyam Vachai, Lays Gal Shul Etzim. So that's seemingly what we were saying. The essence has Chayus in it, and it gives over, what it gives over is just a ray. So it's not the revelation of the Etzim. But there is another type of, so the first one is Chay Be'etzim, and the second one is called Chay Lehachiris. What is Chay Lehachiris? That the relationship between the source of Chayus to the recipient of the, of the Chayus, the source of energy and the recipient of energy, has more closeness. So the relationship between the nefesh that gives life and the body that receives life, in, in our case, it's a nefesh is not chayla achis. So chayla achis would have more closeness. Chay it's it's much more distant. The, the giving, the, between the giver and the recipient, there is more distance between. So this, the nafkamina could be of, of the level of, of uh, how affected the etzim would be. If it's high be'etzim, doesn't, it doesn't, it's not affected by you receive it, you didn't receive it, by the recipient. But high le'achir, seemingly there is more closeness and therefore there is obviously more, um, more effect. Let's see. V'ayinu shu'chai ve'loi v'chaim le'achir. The fact that he's giving life, his mashpia, part of his, of his essence, Ela shenim shechus mana'o k'ach kloli v'k'ach pot. So it, the, what emanates from him is a general power and a specific power. Chayus klolis ve chayus potis. It's also another point. It says, explain the Hasidus that the nefesh which gives the body, influence the body, two types of chayus, a general chayus, which is a, a equals that chayus of the nefesh is in all the limbs equally. Specific. Meaning the toe and the brain would get exactly the same. That's the chayus clawless. And the chayus protis is every limb has its own uh, functionality and therefore receives a separate type of chayus. Your ears, your eyes, each one receives a different uh, types of chayus. That would be the chayus protis. But the nefesh gives these two. General and, and specific. And why? Lehachius is a goof. To give life to the body. oil. This type of revelation, this type of ray, is called oil. What is oil? Why specifically they called it light? Shinyonoi, because light, its functionality is gilui, is revelation. Gilui ashpoil azulas. Is revealing the flow that comes to the zulas, to, to someone else, to, to another entity, to a separate entity. So the body is considered zulas in comparison to the nefesh. Nefesh has one entity. Now it's in giving into the body. It's, a, it's, a, it's a seemingly an outsider. Out, something that is outside the nefesh. So it gives an example between the difference between the light of a candle and the light of the sun. Shehu... It says, it's just a ray, but not the essence. The essence of the sun, the essence of the sun is not disseminated in the space of the world, in the world. Seemingly the same thing. The sun only gives a ray, the essence of the sun only emitting a ray. Okay. Then we say, wasn't it said that that the sun, if you got to the sun, it would be more, uh, there's nothing there. That it's like uh, I, I don't remember. What we, uh, what we know for, uh, in many sources, it says kishemeshu mogin avaleikim. There is a casing to the sun, sheathing that okay. which protects uh, protects yeah, us from right. receiving the okay. direct. Yeah, yeah, right. right. So veol So this revelation. From the sun is called light, but again, it's not the essence. So when it comes to, in general, the life of the nefesh, the life that the nefesh gives, our neshama, the part of the neshama that is invested in our bodies, the essence of the nefesh is not revealed. 
it just away from the essence. This is also when it comes to the individualized limbs. For example, the power of intellect. Again, with every limb has the essence and has the its ray. It what 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 does it give? And it always gives something that is just uh, an outside something is uh, uh, just a ray of the essence. Let's look at the power of intellect. What is the essence of intellect? The power to understand, to come up with ideas. That power is concealed. The fact that we know that, ex that the power of intellect exists, it's not that we feel its existence. We feel that there is intellect. If there is intellect, there is the power of intellect. So it's self-understood that if there is intellect, there is a power of intellect. Meaning, our feeling is only in the revealed intellect. And only the revealed intellect is called light. But the power of intellect, the essence of intellect, is the So, if we calling, think, think about it this way. If everything that is revealed is a ray, is just a ray, and I'm calling the ray light, and everything that is concealed Choshech. is the etzim, and I'm calling the etzim choshech, so what is greater, the dark choshech, choshech or light? Or choshech, oil? Sure. In potential? <laughs> it's obviously choshech because it's the etzim. In potential? In potential. You say, you say which, which one is more... Uh, uh, and so it's dark inside Which the one is more uh, functional? Which one I can live with more? You say with light because uh, I need something to work with. How does it help me? Okay, it's higher, but it's concealed from me. I don't have any access to it. But you see now that Choshech is not so... Uh, well, obviously, we're calling it oil <coughs> because it's revelation. But uh, we see that the concealed is higher than the revealed. Rav Hanistar al Agoli, there's a, a, st a statement that is more Nistar than the revealed, right? We call Choshev just because we don't see the light, but right. actually it's the opposite. Yeah. Actually, it's the Yatsam. And the Yatsam is so much higher than what we receive and what we see and what we are exposed to. It might be dark inside the sun. Yeah. It might be that the functionality of the sun is not per se to give light. It's just a ray of the sun that gives light. But it's etzim, etzim could be much higher than, uh, than just giving uh, light. I think they're sending, they sent some rockets there. I mean, there's, uh, there's things going there right now as we speak to check stuff out. I'm not into the sun because it was just burned up, but closer than anything's been. I think that's happening as we speak. Okay, so it says, Ve'av shivadei adobo. It's says it's self understood that the power of intellect has much more than the revealed intellect. I think it was a, I think it was Einstein that said that uh, we're only using a small percentage of our uh, intellect. About five percent. Yeah. So he says it, it really Chassidus already told it, to, uh, telling it to us that there is. The power of intellect has has much more in yon in beribui, meaning it's a tremendous amount is existing more than the revealed intellect. Obviously, it's the same with the chayus, with the vitality that exists in the essence of the nefesh. Who The dissemination of chayus is already contracted; is condensed. So the essence of Chayus, the essence of the Nefesh, has much more life in it. But nevertheless, the Etzim HaNefesh is called Choshech. Why, why is it called darkness? So when we speak about Etzim HaChayus, or the, the essence of, of Chayus, and the essence of, power of, of the power of intellect, El Azulas, 
Azuz, meaning that uh, the outsider, in Aetzim Shubelem Azuz, the essence is concealed from the Zulas, from the outsider, from the, from the, the Zulas is the recipient. The essence is concealed from the recipient. Nikol Agab Azuz, for the Zulas, for the recipient, it's called Choyshe. It's darkness. And what he receives, he calls it revelation. You know the saying, it's not how much you make, it's how much you leave on the table. So, <laughs> it's, it's uh, similarly over here, we're calling the, the receiving aspect, we're calling it light. And, but what is hidden from us, we're calling it <laughs> darkness. Because you cannot access that. And, yeah. So it's self-understood. From the perspective of the etzem, what you're receiving is darkness. You, you are exposed. From the etzem perspective, it's the opposite. Nothing what you're receiving is darkness yeah. because I'm only giving you peanuts and what you are, <laughs> what's there, the etzem itself, I'm light, I'm revelation, I have everything, I'm containing all of it. It's Robert, like what the, is... the, the essence of intellect also feels that what a, let's say the, uh, the professor that uh, gives, uh, gives his uh, speech, and so he, he speaks about one uh, subject within billions of... It's nothing of, for him. So this, for him, this is darkness, it's not revelation. It opens your, the student's mind to start exploring the idea. But that's the only uh, the seminal uh, beginning of something. So, to, to, so from them, to them it's light. To them it's light. Oh, revelation, beautiful, we got something. But uh, from his perspective, what you got is, is darkness. He has the light. He already has the whole thing. Rabbi, the etzim of, of our neshama is chaya and yichida, it's out from our body, or is a part of a neshama that it's not with us? Within every level, there is the, the, the etzim of that level. Okay? Mm -hmm. So within Nefesh itself, there's the, we always speak in Hasidut, inner and outer, inner and outer. So the, the, the attic of it and the arich of it. So okay. with, even the Nefesh itself has Etzema Nefesh. Okay. And then within a, a Ruach, is Ruach, the outer and inner, outer and inner, everything would happen. Okay. Okay. We just like touch the, the <laughs> outer. <laughs> We receive the outer, and we call the outer light. And what we, we don't see, we call it darkness, as if it doesn't exist. We completely ignore it. And that's why, from the perspective of the giver, we are in the darkness. But it's scary, because it's like, it's like uh, not knowing how to maximize what you have. No, we do know how to maximize it. If we do, we would be <laughs> saying, but if we did, we, we wouldn't be satisfied with that light. Most people... No, we're, we're not satisfied. It says that... We shouldn't be, but I'm saying most people... Relations. Why people don't like changes is a, is a fact. People don't like changes. How, a, a, a lot of people, you know how many people I mean, we meet here every year? We're moving, we're moving, we're moving in Florida, they never move. Why? It's hard to change. It's hard to... I've even, I, I, I think I told it to you, I listened to once a professor that spoke about, uh, uh, they did statistics that a lot of TV shows that are very successful, they have a lot of ratings, the, let's say from 9 to 10, there's a certain show, tremendous amount of rating, and, the, and the, following, the following, and then from 10 to 11, it also gets a lot of rating, even though it's a lousy, uh, it's a lousy show, he says, because people are too lazy to change the channel. <laughs> and, they, and they asked him, why do you watch the 10 to 11? He said, oh, because we're already watching the 9 to 10, so we didn't bother changing the channel. <laughs> and they're talking about and, and, and just switching. And even on the radio, they'll say, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Right. <laughs> we tell you what to do. <laughs> we'll be right back. And don't go away. Don't change the channel. They say, don't change the channel. <laughs> Yeah, but that laziness thing, right, L lack of change. I heard, I heard Rabbi, uh, a nice show about this in the brain. I think I told you, you we create like uh, ways, like the water in the sand, mm -hmm. in the brains. So it's difficult to, to create a new way in the brain. When you do something for a long time, you have a, a way. The way you, you take kids to school, we want the reward, quick. 
So mm. this this way is created. So right. to, to have a new way in the brain, it's difficult to right. change. Yeah. I guess somebody goes to work every day, what are the likelihood that he would take a different route? Yeah. Uh, one day he would try a new route. So I, think, <laughs> I, <think laughs> ways. I think I take yeah. a different way because of the terrorists. Mm. Yeah. Which, like, but when Hashem made us this way, that we, we they have it's, certain it's, consistency it and, and habits and be able to be uh, effective and, and function properly, I don't know. Uh, after you, you want to change your patterns so they can't figure out how you're going. But it's like stupid. If you have only two ways to get someplace, like you, I can go down to New England or Kimberley, how many you know, come here? Or I can go to your model and come all the way around. Yeah. I mean, how many ways is it to come here? Yeah. From Century Village. So in a it's a shabbat and you call it Gabbas or Shosh or Pasha Shosh or Sheba or Big Gil or Azun, you can't say Shem Oil. So it's at the end of the of the page on the bottom. Umizem move on, line uh, 27, right in the middle. Umizem move on. When comes to the etzem, to the essence, it's the opposite. The essence is called light. And the dissemination, what it gives out is choyshev. Okay? That's why, if you remember the famous Gemara, that the rabbi who passed away, and they had this uh, clinical death, and he came back to life, they asked him, what did you see? He said, I saw a... a a topsy-turvy world or upside-down world is, is to ask them what does it mean so he said what is considered important here is not important there what is considered important here is not important there so it's completely the opposite yeah. Yeah. so this is a this it tells us essence is a, considering what he has light and what he gives us choshech and we're considering the opposite v'ayinu shema shagav etzimu eir legav but what the essence would consider light, we would consider darkness. And what we, uh, the essence, what the essence considers darkness, we would consider light. We can see the difference between the, the distinction between thought and speech. Hashem made it in such a way that the, our machshoves will be concealed from the outsider. Machshoves are for you, for yourself. Your wife never know what you're thinking. <laughs> the best thing. <laughs> but, she, but she thinks she does. That's the best thing. <laughs> 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 so, machshoves are for all the gabbazos. It's concealed from the zulas, from the outsider. And the gilu, but the what, yes. Whatever you say is gilu, is revelation. That's a, that's a concept of dibu. That's the functionality of dibu to reveal to the zulas what you're thinking, to your friend, what, you, what what's on your mind. By him is the opposite. By us, if you're thinking about something and you want to give it over someone else. You can never give it over exactly the way you have it in your mind. Okay. So you, you somehow, somehow, even if you manage to say what you wanted to say, it's not exactly what, that's why there's a lot of misunderstandings, and I meant this, and she meant that, and, and okay. why? Because you can never transmit it exactly. So for you, the machshav is gilu. For, for, the, for the outsider, the dibu is gilu. Okay? Right. So it's again the same concept, machshav and dibu, to me, my machshava is revelation, and my dibu is darkness because it doesn't give over exactly me. For us, it's the opposite. And for you, it's the opposite. That's why I say, say what you mean. <laughs> and that's why. Say the, what you mean. That's where I the, was trying to say what I mean. That's where the frustration comes. The people yeah. are frustrated; they cannot completely give it over, especially when there are emotions raging, and it's it's hard to transmit your machshava to someone else. Especially <laughs> in other languages, but in other yeah. languages. Yeah, it's more difficult. Yeah. So. I find the less I say, the better off I am. <laughs>
The Gemara says it. You just said too much. The Gemara said the Dibu Besela Shtika Betre. For Dibu, you receive one Sela. For for being silent, you give you get two slime. Yeah. So you get more for the silence. But the, the famous Mishnah in Pirkei Ovis, the Rabbi that says Lo Matzasi La Guf Toy He said that there's nothing better for the body than than Shtika. So the commentary on it, they said for the body is better to be silent, but the nefesh needs the speaking. The nefesh needs the. The body, the needs of the body, don't speak about them too much. But the needs of the nefesh is Torah, you should be discussing, you should be speaking. The Torah is okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this, in, I, I mentioned that in the army, there are certain rules where they write uh, rules of how to handle your weapon, how to handle yourself, and then they, they write, these rules were written with blood. Meaning that people got... Right. It was a friendly fire and whatever it is that right. people got killed by these mistakes. And so these rules are not we, not, we didn't make it up, going to the mikvah, don't go into the mikvah, or, you know, rules that uh, don't necessarily make sense. These rules were written with blood. Somebody was killed, and this right. is uh, how uh, well, it was. You do this, you right. do this this way. Yeah. In case you think the rules are not so important. Yeah, remember, we're telling you. It's with me. So, so I guess when he tells you, <laughs> you got to watch what you say. Don't drop yeah. a live rifle when you're on a That's range. what Shleim Amalek actually said. It. He said, Chaim v'amov is biada loshen. The life and death are by the tongue. So yeah. there's two interpretations to it. One interpretation says, it's what you eat. It could be a, a life threatening for you overeating or eating the wrong food and uh, or what you what comes out <laughs> the the speech <laughs> saying the wrong things yeah that's why we have to pray to Hashem in the morning we say and <laughs> uh, shouldn't uh, bring us to all the uh, different types of right, we no shouldn't test. say the wrong things no, no, no tests no tests the best uh, uh, solution is to think before you you answer, right? Right. That the Mishnah also in Pirkei says says, yeah, first you should not be nivha leoshiv. Nivha leoshiv is, nobody put a time uh, stopwatch that you, tells you you have to answer within 30 seconds. It doesn't, it doesn't say it anywhere that you have to answer right away. It's not a ping pong game. You have to that's return a, the ball. That's interrogation. <laughs> so you can take your time and answer it wisely, intelligently yeah. and, uh, and yeah. thoughtfully. I heard an interview with Elon Musk where he uh, he's asked a question this is just so brilliant he has all these answers and, and he then, picks the he, he narrows it it's always a pause it's a dramatic pause it's not like one second oh, well, seconds you... go by and then he gives the answer uh -huh. and it's it's fascinating to listen to an interview oh, like wow. that so he's really thinking of his answers. I he's imagine not... that's what he's doing. He has to sort out because a, a, a creative genius like this, you know, so which, which is the better way to get, ba get back to my house? So, you know, the mask mm -hmm. come out, you know, right. what time of day is it, you know, <laughs> is there a flood over there? You know, and you know, but the thing. question, many times, I'm sorry, many times they take the time to respond because they understand the implication of the answer. So that's something else. So, so meaning that the, yeah, so the, the answer is motivated by the, the outcome. So let's say his mission, he went to the interview with, I need to, to create more capital. I need to create more investors investing in Tesla. If I will say this, it would, uh, it would be, <laughs> and if I would say that, it's like, <laughs> Yeah, the concept of, of my answer. It's like a chess game. I, I'm so, so four we, moves ahead. Right, so you don't really know if he's giving <laughs> the, the truth. That's the, that's the thing. You know, we don't the know. The greatest thing he said is he was tested four times for the virus, two were positive and two were negative. <laughs> he said that? In one day. Wow. So, uh, you know, they're making all these idiotic decisions. You should have done it another time. You should have chazako. We're like, yeah, which <laughs> way is that? One way. It's the truth. Imagine they're making all these decisions based on these tests that are, are, are like unreliable. It's like, let's go. I'm, I, but you know, whatever, you know, you never know what he's going to see. He's a loose cannon. I mean, you know? Yeah. Which is Baruch Hashem, a good thing to be a loose cannon like that. So the Kasher, Chayshav, Sasechah, Baisa, Machshavah. 
When somebody is thinking, what line are you at, please? What uh, the kasher choyshe vasecha boys to machshava is a uh, line line uh, nine. Thank you. The kasher choyshe vasecha boys to machshava. Somebody is thinking of of meditating, thinking about the intellect in the letters of thought. So it's it's an interesting statement. What does it mean, letters of thought? It it so we know that our minds. Uh, puts together sentences. In order to put a sentence together, you have to take letters and put them together. So we, we don't really feel it, that it's happening, yes. but in our minds, there are letters flying, and it picks A, B, C, as we as we forming a sentence. Our mind does it without us, so it calls it Oysia Yisamachshava. It's before even the sentence was created, it's in, it's in, in the beginning, <laughs> beginning uh, point where it's, it starts to form the sentence. The kasher choyshev is hasechel beisus amachshava. When the int- it says there's there's no word yet, meiras the kolamit hasechel. The intellect shines in a complete way. Amit hasechel the 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 truthness of the intellect. Pure intellect shines because it's not yet um, placed into words. It's in inter- pure intellect. Kasher malbish hasechel beisus when the intellect is now enclosed in letters. But it's is a dibu in letters of speech. Even before it came out, he already there's a stage where it's ready to be exited, where it's ready to be said. It creates a concealment and contract like contracts the, 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 the intellect. Because the intellect itself is pure, without words, without you just understand it. That's it. And once you have to uh, lower it into speech, there's some kind of a of, of a contraction that takes yeah. place. It's being reduced to words. Right. That, well, wait. So that's the reason when you go out of the body, you don't have the speech. I, I saw many books that the, the Shamot, they, he, they understand each other without speaking. Maybe it's connected to this. Yeah, well, like even a husband and wife, they live together. Yeah, they just see a better understanding. They know what the. Uh, so similarly, this concept happens with the Lakus. The world of creation and the world of formation are like thought and speech. Oilam Abriya is going to be. Obviously, the world of thought and Oilam Hayatsira, the world of formation, is the world of speech, Dibu. The world of creation is called darkness because it's above revelation. The world of formation, where you have um, more of a definition of created beings, which we know that it's the primary abode for, for angels is called Oyer, Vishem Oyer. So Bria is the higher one, is Choyshech, and the lower one, Yetzirah, is Oyer. Kaedua, Peush, Yetzir, Oyer, Uvar, Choyshech. We say in the Brochus before the Kriyat Shema, we say Yetzir, Oyer, Uvar, Choyshech, which is a pasuk in, in Yeshaya, the prophet Yeshaya. What is Yetzir, Oyer? Why for Oyer we, we, we calling it Yetzir? And for Choyshech, we say Boire. Yeah. Right? Remember, we just so said Bria in Yetzirah. Bria in Yetzirah. Yeah. Right? So Boire Choyshech is Bria. So it says Boire Choyshech. Yoitzer Oir Oir is Yetzirah, so we say Yoitzer. So she Yoitzer Oir, Kayal Oilom Yetzirah. Creating light is, forming light is referencing to the world of Yetzirah, the world of formation, Boire Choyshech, and creating darkness is referencing Kaya Aloilama Bria. It's referencing the world of Bria. Vainu the image Shalom Abriu Lamalam Ilum Yetzir, although the world of creation is higher than the world of formation, Shailum Abriu Rakat Cholas Ayesh. The world of Bria is just the beginning of the Yesh, meaning that the, the the beginning of independency, so to speak, starts in the world of Bria. That's why the Zoya um Ariza writes that in the world of Bria you have a little bit of Evil and most of it is good. And Tzira is already 50 50, and Asiya is the opposite, is most of it is not good, and 
and a little bit is good. Atzilus is completely good, right? So he says that in the world of Bria, what cholas hayesh, yesh is not good. Yesh, yesh is, is not, is not good because yesh means yeshu. Say I'm existing, I'm independent, I'm alone. I I I am taking space. If if you're not yes, you're bottle, you're nullified, you're not taking space. You be, you're part of the space. You're you're not a, a separate entity from the space. A, a, a person, uh, if a bullet is flying and hitting a person, it means he takes space. He he's creating uh, resistance to because he maintains his, his space. Imagine a bullet flying goes through him and nothing happens because he's completely. He's nullified. He's one with the space. But it's good or it's bad to have a yesh? Hashem designed it this way. He, Hashem created the yesh for us to nullify the yesh. That's really a trick. You have the yeshus, but the idea is to nullify it. And then there's levels of nullification. Of how? Yesh, bottle, bottle, metzius. There's different levels in, in, in bitu, in nullification. So why Hashem but, made But the yesh process? starts with bria. Because we Hashem... the yesh and we have to... We have, to, uh, we have to work on Bito. Why Hashem didn't create us because with Bito? Because then it wouldn't be a, you wouldn't have a free choice. If I'm completely nullified to Hashem, then He created another angel. He wanted to create you to think that you are independent. Initially, you were born to think that you are independent. You have your Yeshus, and I am who I am, and I have my wills, and I, 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 and I, and I, and I. And then you work on it. <laughs> to, to nullify it. You see that, especially with the teenagers, they, they start to get independence. They think they know everything. Yeah, yeah. What are they you? What are they here for? My son can teach me everything. <laughs> everything, every area. Oh, Hashem. That's Medicine, good. soccer, Hasidut. He <laughs> does the way, but he knows. Good, well, oh, Hashem. He's going to pay the mortgage also. <laughs> Maybe the, the Malach did hit him over here. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> But uh, you'll be surprised, we have a lot to learn from our children. Sure, I know. And, and Hashem is sometimes giving us, the, because He wants to challenge sure. us with, uh, yeah. with, seemingly it's one of us, but thinking differently than us. Yeah. The rabbi spoke yesterday, did, did, you, did you hear him? Yes. About wanting something and need something that right. he learned from his, his, his two year, three years old kid. Right. I need this uh, compared right. to Mashiach. Yeah. We want Mashiach or we need Mashiach? So, like right. this, he learned from his, his yeah. baby. Okay, so, so we learned. Why? What time is it? Okay, I'll f try to finish a little bit more. Then. Anyhow, so it says. The email is Shalom, Bulam. Okay, oh. So. Although the world of Bria is the Malam El Matsilo, the world of creation is just the beginning of Yesh. It says, What is the, what happens in Yetzira? The Yesh is receiving Tsura, which means he will now has, has its it's a shape also. He mm -hmm. has much more of identity. He's, he's formed already. The world of formation. Yeah. We call, that's exactly we call Mokim Legabe Lemato when it comes to us Lemato Nikus Oil of Yetzira B'Shem are we calling the world of Yetzira Oil why Lefishi Yochel Oil Lemato because the world of Yetzira Yetzira has the capability of shining below to Asiya Oil of Abriya Shul Lemalam and Pchinas Gil Lemato Abriya is much higher than Asiya it's too much of a, of a, a leap uh, yeah to to, uh, too much of a jump to come from Bria to Asiya. So we're calling Bria Choshech. Venika B'Shem Choshech. Aval, Gabi Lemala. But from the perspective of Bria, it's the opposite. The world of Bria is light. Because it's here receiving peanuts in comparison to Bria. That's why when we say the bracha of Yetzir. You have to touch the hand feeling. You're touching the head feeling. Ah, okay? Which is there you go. Yeah. You didn't know the thing it says in the No, seat. it says, yeah. No, but I didn't know why. Yeah. Okay. I mean, why I'm saying the Choshech. Right. Right. This is dark. It has a stop. Yes. This is a Lachau. This is a Minhag. Minhag. 
So, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's only in, in Chabad because it's written in Pritz Chaim. So Pritz Chaim is the, the teaching of the Arizal. So whoever follows the, the, the Arizal, not only Chabad, okay. Uh, okay. They would do it. Are you coming okay. back here? I'll come back and drop you back if you want. Yeah. Okay. 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 What time so, is it? It's 8.15 or so. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll continue. Uh, continue. Wow. God willing, tomorrow we'll find out why we're touching the hand. Uh, oh, yeah. And then now the we're going to have to do it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright, Shabbat Bashma. Have a good day. Alright. Amen. A good day, everyone.